So Mark Mayfield, in his book, The Path Out of Loneliness, and I'm actually going, uh, I'm, I'm learning a lot from that book. He says, the deepest desire of every human being is to be seen, valued, and loved. Every person desires to be seen, valued, and loved. In other words, to be securely attached to another human being. But we struggle with that. We struggle with disconnect, hurt, anxiety, depression. Our own relational models growing up were distorted. Like I told you last week, no matter how good the parents that we had, we are broken parents, we're sinners. Therefore, we have not experienced this secure, more secure, perfect attachment. There's no one who can provide that for you. Because of that, we experience these relationships that are distorted. And we know what's wrong, but we don't know what to do with it. Attachment is when we develop from zero to three-year-old. The sense of security, like as you are attached to the primary caregiver, and then you feel safe. You feel safe, and that is developed from between zero years old and three years old. And in this baby, experience this skin-on-skin -skin contact with the mother or the father, and then when that is securely attached, then in the future, it actually gives a confidence and security, and they function like this. For example, mom and dad are safe, therefore I can venture out into the world try new things, develop relationships, and explore, knowing that I always have someone safe to come back to. That's the result of being securely attached to someone. So there are three fundamentals of attachment. One is, are you being seen? You know, do we really see each other? And that's the way that how we can really help each other to be securely attached. Second is, are you safe? Do you really feel safe around this person or around the people, around the group? Do you really feel safe? Not only physically, yeah, that's important, like we have a house, so at nighttime, we don't have to feel insecure about people coming in and steal our stuff. At the same time, there's an emotional safety, not just physical. Is this person, our caregiver, is a safe, or do I get scared? Am I really feel safe at home, or do I feel anxious, insecure? And then third component is, are you soothed? Meaning, yourself, you, you want to spend time with this person, and when, because when you're spending time with this person, you know this person listens to you. You know this person empathizes with you. They don't just say, toughen up. They don't just say, suck it up. They don't just say, it's not a big of deal. Like, we don't like when people, when we pour our lives on them and this is what we get. We want people to listen to us, hear us out, and also provide empathy. These are three fundamentals of really providing secure attachment. And although that started from zero to three, and that goes on and on. And even if we didn't have it, there's a way that we can securely attach. It's a learning process. And we need to be around people that are being seen and then also feel secure and also empathize with. But I told you one, again and again, even though we had the best parents ever from zero to three years old, we know that every single parent is a sinner, so there's no way that we could be most perfectly attached to anyone else. There's no one in the world who does that. Parents, but that's not the excuse, right? I'm just a sinner, right? No, no, no. We got to do our best to represent Jesus Christ when we take care of our children. And if we do wrong, we must make it right. 
If we cannot do that with our own children, how are we going to do that to a bunch of strangers, right? So that's something that parents, we really need to do this well. Not only parents, but if you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you are youth pastors, or if you're children's pastors, all the same. Having said that, there is no way that anyone can perfectly attach and feel more secure with that individual, even though how good our parents or our caregivers are. But there is a hope that we can attach most securely in Jesus Christ. He's the answer. We're going through this loneliness series, and people who feel detached, people who feel isolated, not connected, are lonely. But can you imagine, what if I say there is a solution to your loneliness due to lack of attachment, lack of connection, and that is Jesus Christ. You can attach to Jesus Christ, and he will never, ever disappoint you. Wouldn't you want that? And that is the invitation of Jesus Christ. I love it, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. I love especially how and, uh, the, the message, the message uh, portrays it. So can we read that? It says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Anybody? Don't raise your hand. Just wink at me. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Jesus says, come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. This is a perfect passage for those who are longing for secure attachment. Are you tired? Are you disconnected, worn out, burnt out? Are you lonely? Come to me, Jesus says. Don't come to the religion. Come to me. Get away with me. Just like a Southwest airline, right? Get away with me, and you will recover your life. He says, get away with me. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Don't you want that? Real shalom, real rest. You feel more safe when you rest. You feel secure. If you're not feeling safe or secure, how are you going to take a real rest? In Jesus' presence, you feel more secure. In Jesus Christ, you feel more safe. He says, I'll, take, I'll show you how to take a real rest. He says, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. He never says, figure it out on your own. Try it. No, he says, walk with me. You are never alone. You'll never do this alone. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Isn't it so good? He's not going to lay anything ill-fitting or heavy on you. May I feel safe with Jesus, don't you? And he says, keep company with me. Keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. That's the answer. If you struggle with disconnect, distrust, you struggle with isolation, you struggle with not being seen, Jesus says, keep company with me. Come and attach to me, and you will learn to live freely. And lightly. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how bad or good your childhood was, we have hope in Jesus. You could securely attach to Jesus. You can feel safe with Jesus, more secure with Jesus. He hears you. You're being seen. You feel secure with Jesus. And he listens to you. He says, get away with me. Keep company with me. That is the answer. Every single lonely people, answer is Jesus. Come to Jesus. 
attach to Jesus, and you'll recover your life. We're not off the hook. Because Christ followers are imitators of Jesus Christ. If we are to imitate Jesus, we got to imitate what Jesus told us to do right there. We are the imitators of Jesus. Can we say this to the lonely people? Can we say, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out religion? Come with me to Jesus. Can we say that? Get away with me as I'm getting away with Jesus. I recover my life. Would you want to recover yours too with Jesus? See, we have to be the imitators of Jesus Christ. If God is creating a space that is full of safety and love and security, and his own people are not providing that, then are we really imitating? Mayfield says power of presence that we must provide for those who are longing for that secure attachment. The power of presence. Mayfield asked this question. Have you ever been affected by the mood in your home? He says, I can remember numerous occasions when I came home after an amazing day at work. Clients had a breakthroughs. I was connected to the Holy Spirit and life was good. Sarah, on the other hand, had a rough day with the girls and was frustrated, angry, and slightly depressed. That's the wife. All too quickly, my mood would drop to match theirs. It wasn't their fault. It just happened. Our presence has power. See, we get the perfect, most secure attachment from Jesus as we keep company with Jesus. But Jesus is the one who sees us. He makes us feel secure, safe. He listens to us. He empathizes with us. He walks with us no matter where we are in life. But now Jesus is calling his disciples, the imitators of Jesus, to imitate Jesus. Jesus gave us the authority to do what Jesus did on earth, even greater. Can we, the Christ followers, Christ imitators, the family of Christ, provide a secure attachment, safe place, and empathize to those who long to connect, to be seen, to feel secure? Can we, the imitators of Jesus Christ, can the community of Jesus or family of Jesus Christ provide for that? Because... We imitate Jesus. This is what Jesus does. We imitate Jesus. So we also ought to provide that for one another. Can we really say to the lonely people, get away with us as we get away with Jesus on a regular basis? Can we really walk with them? Can we really show them how to walk with Christ and work with Christ? This is my theory. I believe one of the reasons why people came to the in-person church service when the COVID is winding down is because of they want to be connect with people. They want to connect with God and they want to connect with people. Right? Real people. That's why they left online platforms and they came in person. But to those people who don't provide the power of presence of people, there's no need to come back to in-person service. Why? Nobody sees me. I don't know anybody. Nobody talks to me. I don't feel secure around these people. Nobody listens to me. Nobody empathizes with me. Why would I go to that place? I would just watch online. 30 to 40% of people don't come back to church anymore. And I challenge them, maybe because you do not provide the presence of God and presence of God's people. If they tasted the presence of God's people, then why wouldn't they be here in person? That's my theory. I don't know if it's right or not, but it sounds good. That's actually what happens to us, right? We never had a problem with in-person gathering. Why? And I ask, why are you here? Presence of God, someone says. Or I need to connect with people. Presence of God, presence of people. There's a power in the presence. There's a toxic presence, bad presence, but there's a Jesus presence. We're the imitators of Jesus Christ. We're going to spread the presence of Jesus whenever we gather. Amen? And that's my challenge for you guys. People want to be seen. Not just say, hey, hi, hi, how are you? Don't tell me your problems. Just say fine. Just say fine. Okay, I'm busy, okay? I got to go. 
I'm guilty of that. On Sunday, I hate refreshment times. As a pastor, I have to say, hello, 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 hello. I got to go to members class. I got to go to meet this meeting. I want to sit down and then I want to get, how are you really doing? And just lock the eyes and listen and I empathize. Don't try to solve problems. Don't try to fix problems. But listen, empathize. So they feel secure. They feel like, I like this place. I like these people. They accept me as I am. They help, but they don't condemn me. They don't quickly give me a solution, but they listen to me. That's what we need to provide. Can we provide? An atmosphere where people could really attach securely in Jesus and among Jesus' people. Otherwise, there's no reason people to belong to a church. I don't hype up Easter. I'm one of those people who try to create a movement, don't make Easter special. You know why? Why is it that on Easter, every single person have to stress out? They spend all the resources, a month before Easter, they do all kinds of promo. They're trying to bring all these people who left the church on Easter. Why aren't we doing that every single Sunday? That should never be once a year thing. Every single Sunday is a resurrection Sunday. Every single Sunday is an Easter Sunday. So I don't hype up. You know why? Because they're so hype up. Sunday after Easter is the most depressing day for pastors. I even preached on the last Sunday. I mean last year. It is so true because they get, oh, we got so many people came. And then the following Sunday, nobody shows up. And they're like, what happened? I hate my life. Like, why you go through the garbage? Make sure every single Sunday is Easter Sunday. Bring all those lost people. If you want to use all your resources on bringing the people, that should be every day. Not just once a year and get depressed the next Sunday. It is an important day, but I'm not going to hype it up. I'm going to do the same as what we do every single Sunday. Amen? Every Sunday is a resurrection Sunday. But even if you hype it up, even if you brought 100 newcomers, what if these 100 newcomers don't have a place where they cannot experience the presence of God or presence of Jesus' people? That nobody really cares for you. Nobody really sees you. Nobody really empathizes with you. You don't feel secure or safe around them. I don't care how amazing the program for Easter was. The next Sunday or the Sundays after, they're not going to show up. Even if you brought the lost people and they say, I believe in Jesus. I recommit. I want to come to Jesus Christ. But you have no place for them to experience God, experience the love from one another. We gotta change that first. So the people come and they're like, wow, this is what the Bible said. Wow, these people really are like Jesus followers. I feel like I'm living the book of Acts. If we don't, are we just fooling ourselves, bragging about 100 people, 300 new people came on Easter? And the next Sunday, you're so depressed because those people who showed up on Easter don't show up anymore. See, that is foolishness. Don't play that game. Loneliness should be the place for elsewhere, but not in the presence of God, not in the body of Christ. Can we be known for that? Oh, are you lonely? Go to the church. Go. Be around, be around God's people. Be around the people who imitate Jesus. You will experience healing from loneliness. Breakthrough from loneliness. And that's my prayer. Let's pray.